Hi guys, a very good morning to all of you. I am Gulabsa, your mentor, and I welcome you once again to another session of Finance Current Affairs, whereby we discuss or talk about the current financial happenings around us. So let's get started for today. But before that, if you have still not downloaded the app, you can do so by going on to the Google Play Store. वहाँ जाओ, app को download करो Google Play Store से and make the utmost use of it. एग्जाम्स आर राउंड दी कॉर्नर अभी सेबी का एग्जाम आएगा अप्रैल अराउंड इट इज एक्सपेक्टेड कि आरबीआई का फेज वन एग्जाम हो जाएगा सो जस्ट गेट अप एंड स्टार्ट प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर द एग्जामिनेशन इफ यू स्टार्ट टुडे एज वी ऑल नो सो इन स्टडी विंस द रेस राइट तो स्मार्ट वर्क के साथ अपनी कंसिस्टेंसी बनाए रखो एंड प्रिपेयर वेल फॉर द अपकमिंग एग्जाम सो व्हाट आर वी गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट सो देयर आर थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट न्यूज आर्टिकल और उसको हम डिस्कस करेंगे द फर्स्ट इज द मीटिंग दैट वाज हेल्ड ऑफ द सब कमिटी ऑफ एफएसडीसी तो एफएसडीसी क्या होती है और द कंपोजिशन ऑफ एफएसडीसी हु हेड्स और हु इज द चेयरमैन ऑफ दिस कमिटी ऑल ऑफ दीस विल बी टॉक्ड अबाउट इन दिस वेरी न्यूज आर्टिकल द सेकंड आर्टिकल टॉक्स अबाउट सेबीज प्रपोजल इन ऑर्डर टू स्ट्रीमलाइन डिस्क्लोजर फ्रेमवर्क तो सेबी ने कुछ प्रपोजल पुट फॉरवर्ड किए हैं इन ऑर्डर to have a better disclosure framework so that there is less of information asked the ministry uske bare mein dekhenge and thirdly we have a data which says that the bank of maharashtra has stopped the list of psu that is the public sector lending for the public sector unit lenders in credit growth during financial year 2022 quarter second second quarter it is the bank of maharashtra that has the highest growth In num in the terms of number of loans provided, in terms of the percentage of loans provided by them. ठीक है? So let's get started with the very first news article. थोड़ा सा static है, but yes, this static news are also important. कई बार आपको short notes पूछ लिया जाता है, specifically in phase two. तो आपको पता होना चाहिए, you should have content to write in such answers. So this is the 29th meeting. of the fsdc so what is this fsdc fsdc stands for financial stability and development council so by the name it suggests that this committee will work for development in order to maintain the financial stability or in order to make the entire financial sector resilient enough so that the economy could function well now as from the name it says financial stability of the financial sector and for your kind information financial sector mein kya kya aayenge it's not only rbi that comes there right we have sebi the capital market as well the insurance market as well isliye irdi and all the regulators of the financial sector such as pfrda for the pension sector insurance ke liye irdi then we have sebi for the market segment and then we have rbi so all of these will be a member of this committee so a meeting was held and it was chaired by shri shakti kanta das the governor of rbi to ye aapko yaad rakhna hai fsdc ki jo sub committee ki meeting hui thi it was a 29th meeting and it was held by uh, it was chaired or it was headed by the chairman of rbi that is shri shakti kanta das who is the governor of rbi as well he is the chairman of the monetary policy committee and governor of rbi now what all did they talk about so this committee reviewed the major developments in the domestic and the global economy so what all major developments have been taken forward for example credit bad rahi hai uh, liquidity has gone down gone down and then we can see an upsurge in the demand for goods and services specifically the contact intensive services industries have been accelerating in the number of loans that they are taking so all of these developments Uh, globally, domestically, the globally we can say that our export has become more than that. Import has been moderate. So all of these uh, were assessed and talked about in this very meeting, the 29th meeting of FSDC subcommittee. And then they also talked about inter-regulatory issues. Now, what is this inter-regulatory issue? So all the regulators of the financial sector in India, as I have mentioned. SEBI, RBI, PFRD, IRDI, 
Now the committee seeks or tries to maintain a coordination between these financial uh, sector regulator. But they, obviously there will be certain problems. So these problems were also discussed and talked about. The issues were talked about in this very meeting. So inter-regulatory issues were also highlighted in the very meeting. Apart from that, the, company, the committee also reviewed uh, the activities of various technical groups that are there. For example, they review the functioning of the state level coordination committees. So certain coordination committees are made or formed at the state as well as UT level, Indian territory level to maintain it. So their activities and their functioning to review. Kara. Apart from that, the committee also resort or wants to remain vigilant and proactive in order to ensure that the financial markets and financial institutions remain resilient amid, amidst the, fill, the spillover arising from the evolving macroeconomic situation. So we have talked about this in a number of our videos. MPC ke jab meeting aati hai, then we talk about how the global developments are are impacting or creating an impact on the Indian economy. For example, US Fed rate hikes karti hai, jiske wajah se Indian economy mein bhi humne dekha hai that the Monetary Policy Committee tries to increase the repo rate so that FPIs who are putting money into India are not are not uh, are not uh, do not take out money from India because it is less incentive for the low less incentivize na ho jai iske liye RBI also tries to mirror the repo rate hike or the policy hike done by the US for the developed economy and this ensures that FBI remains uh, invested into the stocks and shares of India. So these are global developments. Hai. So in all these things we talked about. Plus so the main issue was the coordination, the inter-regulatory coordination so that our financial sector as a whole remains resilient against any kind of domestic as well as global spillovers or macroeconomic uh, impact. Simple. Now let's move forward and talk about the participation. So who all participated? As we have talked about in the subcommittee of FSDC, it was headed by the RBI governor Shakti Kanta Das. Apart from him, I have also talked about that FSDC constitutes of all the financial sector regulators, and that's the reason why the chairman of uh, we have the chairman of SEBI, chairman of SEBI, then we have chairman of IRDI, then we have the chairman of PFRDA. Apart from that, we also have uh, members from Secretary from Department of Economic Affairs, Department of Financial Services, Ministry of Corporate Affairs, and rest all you can read and go through it. Now you did not remember all the names, but yes, certain chairman, this is chairman PFRD, IRDA, ka kaun hai. these are important specifically from phase one's perspective. Waha pe aapko direct question a jati hai, right? Who is the chairman of the financial regulator or the financial sector regulator of insurance sector. So, you have to know what the answer is. The rest of the question is not going to happen. But what you can take out from this is that all the departments and all the sectors that have been mentioned here are the members of the FSDC. Okay? Moving forward. And talking about the main facts. To talk about the establishment, the very interesting thing is that it is a non-statutory FX council under the Ministry of Finance. First of all, we talk about the non-statutory FX council. Ki. What is non-statutory means? Non-statutory means that it is not a law. It, is, it has not been formed or registered under any kind of law or any kind of act. It is not a law behind it. For example, the Companies Act, uske piche act hai, right? uh, there is an act for, for let's say the powers that the directors derive as well as jaise humne suna hoga, National Company Law Tribunal. So, inke piche act hai, right? There is a specific section of the, the act under which these are formed. But if we talk about Financial Stability and Development Council, FSCC, it is a 
एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑर्डर दैट इज बट दर्डर ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया उनके ऑर्डर के थ्रू इस काउंसिल को बनाया गया था एंड स्पेसिफिकली टॉक अबाउट हु रिकमेंडेड इट सो इट वॉज राम राजन कमिटी ऑन फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर रिफॉर्म इन टू थाउजेंड एट दैट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम रिकमेंडेड द क्रिएशन ऑफ एफ एस डी सी वट कुड बी दर्पज द पर्पज वॉज टू ब्रेक ऑल द Uh, financial sector regulators together so that there can be a coordination amongst them and together they can prove resilience or they can maintain the financial resilience so that the economy functions well ye year bhi kafi zyada highlighted hona chahiye kyunki usi ke time pe hamara global financial crisis hua tha and therefore there was a need a need was felt that all the financial sector regulators should come together and together they should coordinate in order to have resiliency simple to aapko samajh aa gaya iske piche koi law ya kisi act ki backing nahi hai there is no backing of any act or any law and it is created by an executive order and it was created in the year 2010 to so 8 may recommend kiya tha kya tha in 2010 may it was created kisne recommend ki thi it was a raguram rajan committee on financial sector reforms let's move forward and talk about uh other things for example the composition ab composition ki baat karte hain there i talked about who all attended the meeting ab aapko zyada clarity yahan se milegi and you need to be cautious here as well for instance it says that the financial stability and development council agar hum bas fs dc ki baat kare then this fs dc jo fs dc hai it is chaired by the finance minister the union finance minister For example, Nirmala Sitaraman is the chairman or is the chairman of this committee, Financial Stability and Development Council. And unki members kaun kaun hai? Is committee ki members? The committee members includes the heads of all financial sector regulators, as I have mentioned, RBI, B, P, F, R, D, I, R, D, A. Uske lama we have the finance secretary, secretary of Department of Economic Affairs. then we have secretary of department of financial services and chief economic advisor so ye sare members hain is committee ke now here you can see that i have written that this fsdc sub committee is headed by the governor of rbi to yahan bachcho ko confusion hota hai agar bas fsdc ki puche who is the chairman of fsdc it is the union finance minister but if the question is who is the chairman of this sub committee of fsdc agar sub committee ke chairman pucha jayega then the sub committee is headed by the governor of rbi and that's the reason why jab hum news ko samajh rahe the wahan pe the first line was the committee or the sub committee or the meeting was headed by the rbi governor shaktikanta das Simple. Next, it says that in 2018 the government reconstituted FSDC. So initially members were here, the financial sector regulator, the financial services department of financial services, uh, department of economic affairs, or our chief economic advisor. But 2018, it was reconstituted. It was reconstituted in order to include members. from uh, minister of state of department of economic affairs department of electronics and information technology to so, meti ko bhi include kiya gaya tha and also the chairperson of idbi insolvency and bankruptcy board of india plus the revenue secretary so these are the members of fsdc chairman is union finance minister sub committee ka head kon hai rbi governor now let's move forward And talk about the functions. Functions we have already derived from the name, and it is to strengthen and institutionalize the mechanism to maintain financial stability, financial resiliency. Maintain करना है. Apart from that, enhancing inter-regulatory coordination. जो financial sector regulators हैं, उसके बीच coordination maintain करना है. And promoting financial sector development. Development of the overall financial sector. second it says to monitor macro prudential supervision of the economy right uske alawa functioning of large financial conglomerates jo bade bade conglomerates hain 
कंपनीज दैट आर इन टू डिफरेंट और डाइवर्स फील्ड राइट उनको भी हमें मेंटेन करना है फॉर एग्जाम्पल एक्चुअल का एग्जाम्पल ले सकते हो आप राइट ना एक्चुअल इज प्रेजेंट इन दंज्यूमर ड्यूरेबल्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम कंज्यूमर ड्यूरेबल्स बहुत सारी चीजों में है अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट वी हैव आई टी सी आई टी सी मेक्स नोटबुक्स सिगरेट्स भी सेल करता है वी हैव आई टी सी होटेल्स एज वेल बहुत सारी सेगमेंट्स में इन्वॉल्व है so all of these are known as conglomerates and because of their size they are known as the large financial conglomerates so their functioning unko bhi assess karti hai fsdc so you should uh, you should keep in mind the functions that are performed by this very council moving forward to the next news the next news as i have talked about is that sebi's proposal to streamline disclosure framework so disclosure framework lana cha raha hai sebi and therefore it has proposed certain amendments uh, amendments in its paper the consultation paper was released on november 12 and uh, where by sebi proposed new thresholds for the so called material disclosure so material disclosure ke liye न्यू प्रपोजल्स सेबी ने लाई है इफ इट रिसीव पॉजिटिव पब्लिक कॉमेंट्स एंड बेस्ड ऑन अदर ऑब्जर्वेशन मे बी दिस वुड बी इम्प्लीमेंटेड इन फ्यूचर एंड एंड इफ टॉक अबाउट द करंट सिनारी द करंट रेगुलेशन एंड कंपनीज नीड टू डिस्क्लोज एनी इवेंट सच एस एनी काइंड ऑफ एक्विजिशन मर्जर डी मर्जर restructuring or sale of any unit which will have an impact on the business so any event that is creating an impact on a company on a business needs to be disclosed now what could be such impacts such events even such as acquisition if a company if a bigger company is trying to acquire a smaller company kisi ko agar acquire karti hai that will create an impact then we have merger if two companies come together right if two companies come together and merge all together then merge together into one unit then that is known as merger then we have de merger if suppose there is a big company if a part of it wants to disassociate from that very big company agar hul hai agar hul say duff it's a sub a uh, brand you can say if da wants to de associate itself agar wo wahan se nikalna chahta hai then that is known as de merger then we have restructuring if the overall company is restructured management ko change kiya ja raha hai and everything is being restructured that is known as restructuring of the companies loans ko beja ja raha hai new assets laaye ja rahe hain so this constitutes the restructuring or sale of any unit now hul has certain life boy ho gaya then we have दस हो गया अगर उसको लक्स हो गया अगर उसको किसी एक को बेचना है एनी यूनिट इफ इट वॉन्ट्स टू सेल दैट विल कम ऑन सेल ऑफ एनी यूनिट सो दीज आर वेरी बिग बिजनेस डिसीजन एंड ऑल ऑफ दिस विल हैव अ मेजर इम्पैक्ट ऑन दी बिजनेस एंड सच नीड्स टू बी डिस्कलोज पब्लिकली सो दैट देर इज नो सो देर इज नो काइंड ऑफ असमेट्री इंफॉर्मेशन तो असमेट्री नहीं होना चाहिए इंफॉर्मेशन में so now what are the material disclosures that sebi has proposed new uh, new thresholds bataye hain sebi ne for material disclosure so what would be so sebi says in the proposal that if any event if suppose any of these even is creating an impact whereby at least two person of the company's turnover jo company ki turnover hai agar wo do person tak इम्पैक्ट कर रही है टू पर्सन ऑफ दी कंपनी टर्न ओवर इज इम्पैक्टेड चाहे वो पॉजिटिव हो चाहे वो नेगेटिव हो देन इट इज अ मटेरियल इंफॉर्मेशन अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट इफ इट इम्पैक्ट टू पर्सन ऑफ दी नेटवर्क इफ देर इज अर्ज एंड दैट मॉज इंक्रीज द नेटवर्थ ऑफ द कंपनी एंड इफ दैट इंक्रीज इज अटलीस्ट टू पर्सन दैन दैट इज अ मटेरियल इंफॉर्मेशन एंड थर्डली Five percent of the three-year average profit and loss. जो भी profit and loss होगा after tax sale. So PAT. We say short term क्या है profit or loss after tax? It is PAT. Three year का हमें average लेना है. इस average का five percent. Because suppose two company comes together. ठीक है? तो उनकी profits भी साथ आ जाएंगी. If that Uh, coming together of two companies 
results in a profit in an average profit of at least five percent. Three years, three years ka average. अगर उसका फाइव परसेंट इम्पैक्ट है then that is known as a material disclosure. तो ये आपको याद रहने चाहिए मे बी दिस न्यू मटीरियल डिस्कलोजर विल बी इम्प्लीमेंटेड इन दी कमिंग इयर्स और मंथ अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट सेबी और द मार्केट रेगुलेटर इज ऑल्सो कंसिडरिंग टू हैव द टाइम प्रोवाइडेड फॉर द कंपनी फॉर मेकिंग डिस्कलोजर तो अर्लियर अगर चौबीस घंटे लगते थे 24 घंटे दिए जाते थे टू मेक एनी काइंड ऑफ डिस्कलोजर नाउ ओनली ट्वेल्व आवर्स विल बी प्रोवाइडेड सिमिलरली इन केसेस ऑफ डिसीजन टेकन बाई इन बोर्ड मीटिंग एज बी ऑन टू जनरल मीटिंग होती है स्पेशल मीटिंग भी होती है इफ एनी डिसीजन इज टेकन एंड सच डिसीजन आर मटीरियल इनफ टू बी डिस्कलोज देन दैट शुड बी डन विद इन थर्टी मिनट्स थर्टी मिनट्स के अंदर आपको डिस्कलोज करना पड़ेगा सेवन को मूविंग फॉरवर्ड What else do we have? So next is to make disclosures of cyber security. SEBI has also proposed that apart from disclosing the material information, the company, specifically the listed companies, should also disclose cyber security. Now, in case of cyber security, you can easily disclose it because that will create vulnerability. So such disclosures will lead to vulnerability, and therefore SEBI has said that the disclosures. Uh, after suppose such event has happened after certain time it should be disclosed so that investors could understand or could be made aware of the associated risk and its impact that could have because of such cyber security incidents as well as breaches of loss of data theek hai and such disclosure of cyber security related incidents should be made in the quarterly corporate governance report by the listed entities so ye aapko yaad rakhna padega ki koi bhi cyber security related incident agar disclose kiya ja raha hai that is to be disclosed through this corporate governance report through this quarterly corporate governance report that is prepared by the listed company and if the post this proposals आर इम्प्लीमेंटेड कौन सा रेगुलेशन अमेंड किए जाएंगे सो सेबी वुड बी एमेंडिंग एलो दे आर ठीक है तो लिस्टिंग ऑब्लिगेशन एंड डिस्कलोजर रिक्वायरमेंट इज द रेगुलेशन दैट विल बी अमेंडेड इन ऑर्डर टू मेक फॉर और इनकलकेट ऑल द प्रपोजल और मोस्ट ऑफ द प्रपोजल सेबी हैज रिसेंटली पुट फॉर्वर्ड तो ये बेसिकली इंफॉर्मेशन था फर्स्ट फर्स्ट Having new threshold for material disclosures: two percent of turnover, two percent of net worth, or five percent, five percent of three years net, uh, three years average profit or loss after tax. Then, after that, we had the cyber security breaches, which you have to corporate governance, corporate governance report. Me disclose. Karne hai. And finally, SEBI. मे कम अप विद अ कम्प्लीट गाइडेंस क्या कैसे क्या करना है एंड बेस्ड ऑन दैट अमेंडमेंट शुड बी मेड टू एलो दे आर सिंपल मूविंग फॉरवर्ड ना दीज आर इंफॉर्मेशन बट दिस इंफॉर्मेशन आर ऑल्सो इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज क्वेश्चन मे बी आस्ट फ्रॉम हियर ठीक है मूविंग फॉरवर्ड टू द नेक्स्ट न्यूज तो दिस सो बेसिकली ऑल दी पब्लिक The banks had come up with their financial statements, and based on on an analysis of the financial statements released by the public sector banks, it is the Bank of Maharashtra that has stopped in terms of credit growth. सबसे ज़्यादा credit growth Bank of Maharashtra की हुई है, specifically uh, the Pune headquartered bank. तो उनकी सबसे ज़्यादा है. And the second number we have the Indian Bank of India, and thirdly we have SBI. So, in Pino Bank, we talk here the list of credit growth, specifically in quarter two of the financial year 2022-23. A percentage के terms में दिया हुआ है. Percentage are not at all important. You just need to remember the name. ठीक है. Now there was a contraction. The what is the contraction? The contraction is that. ये percentage terms में it is the Bank of Maharashtra that has stopped. But if we talk about in terms of numbers, the numbers की बात करें. Then it is SBI who has stopped the list. How SBI total loans were about seventeen times higher as compared to the loans given by Bank of 
Maharashtra. Moving forward to what all information are there according to the analysis. According to the analysis, there was uh, it is the Bank of Maharashtra that has recorded the highest growth specifically in the sector retail, agriculture, and MSME sector. So, in the Indian sector, the highest credit growth it is Bank of Maharashtra followed by Bank of Baroda and then SBI. If we talk about current account, saving account, just so CASA we go to deposits. So, in terms of deposits, specifically currently in saving account, it is again the Bank of Maharashtra that is top the list. In deposits ke case, maybe Bank of Maharashtra is top. Kiya hai. If we talk about net interest margin, now this uh, term becomes important for you. What is this net interest margin? So net interest margin talks about the total money that you receive or the total receipt that you have after providing for the interest on the deposits. So what does banks do? What is the normal uh, activity of the bank? The normal banking activity is to take deposits from the customers and lend to the borrowers. So the banks pays interest to the depositors, uh, pays a lower interest and charges a higher interest from the borrowers. Whatever is the difference is known as the net interest margin and it is a very important indicator in order to understand the financial or the profit of any bank. So here this formula is given, net interest margin is equal to interest received by giving loans, borrowings, jo aap dete ho, minus the interest paid on the deposits, deposits jo logo ne aapke paas kiye hai, divided by the average invested assets, whatever is the average invested assets of the banks. So if we talk about the net interest margin, who has earned the maximum profit, it is Bank of Maharashtra and SBX. So both of them has registered or uh, have registered a net interest margin of 3.55 percent. Okay. Moving forward to the next important uh, parameter that is non-performing assets. So we talk about non-performing assets. It is again Bank of Maharashtra and SBI that have the lowest NPA. Or what was the rate? It was around 3.4 and 3.52. And this is very low, specifically it is a gross NP. If you talk about the net NPA, net NPA of these banks came down to 0.68 and 0.8. So we can say that all of the measures that were introduced by the RBI, for example, asset quality review, or the stringent laws were introduced, all of these has helped these public sector banks in order to produce their NPA. So NPA ya fir stress assets jo banks ke thi wo kaafi kam ho gayi hai. Next is the capital adequacy ratio. The, uh, the amount of capital that any bank is required to keep as a buffer. So if you talk about Bank of Maharashtra, they had a capital adequacy ratio of 16.71% which is very high. And this was followed by Canada Bank and then the Indian Bank. Talk about net profit, the overall net profit. Then in the first half of the financial year 2022-23, the cumulative net profit, matlab sare public sector banks ke net profit ko include karke dekho ge, that, that has increased by 32%. That is our public sector banks are in a profitable situation which is very good for the economy. Moving forward, to the questions. So these are certain questions for you uh, to be answered in the comment section based on whatever we have studied. So the first question says, uh, with the re reference to the Financial Stability and Development Council, consider the following statements and we need to identify the correct statements. This question is very important because this question was asked in one of the examinations. Okay? So three statements say, the first statement is that FSDC is an organ of Niti Ayo. Second, it is headed by the Union Finance Minister. Third, it monitors macro prudential supervision. So any kind of prudence that needs to be taken up or to be maintained by the bank so that there is less of any kind of risk that banks face. So this helps with monitoring any kind of macro prudential supervision of the economy. You need to identify the correct answer. 
Moving forward to the next question, which says, who is the head of the subcommittee of the Financial Stability and Development Council? Is this the RBI governor or the union finance minister or SEBI chairman or IRDI chairman or PFRDA chairman? Moving forward again to the next question, which says, which of the following will be considered as a material disclosure? Again, this is very important. As per the SEBI's proposed disclosure framework, three things are 2% two of the company's turnover, 2% two of net worth, 2% of the five-year average profit or loss after tax. You need to identify the correct statement. And lastly, the question that we have for today is, which of the following bank topped the list of PSQ lenders in credit growth during quarter two of financial year 2022? So, five banks ke naam hai, you need to identify the correct one. Simple and such questions are generally asked in phase one. So, you have to prepare karna and keep in mind. Theke? So, this was all for today that I wanted to discuss with you. The answers are also provided uh, in this very PDF. The PDF will be shared to you over the Telegram group. In case of any doubt, you can always reach out to us. And keep learning. Till then, bye-bye.